Good morning, folks. We've got a number of news stories to hit today, including the big debate on volcanoes. But we begin with the departing active regions and the rest of our star at spaceweathernews.com as we find those bright spots departing and large coronal hole taking over the Earth-facing half of the sun. Sunspots on their way out are producing some more small flares this morning, but again, they're already pointed 90 degrees away from Earth. The solar wind continued relaxing the last day to reach very quiet levels, KP index was a fraction of a mark away from a KP zero day. Even still, the app sent out the Cosmic Ray Health Alert this morning as we're at the second highest advisory mark for not only cardiac and mental health patients, but for cognitive and emotional instability in all biological life. Meanwhile, solar wind from this coronal hole is about two days away, but we're beginning to magnetically connect to it already. Before we get to the top stories, let's remember that the cold wave is coming tonight. This week brings record cold temperatures to many of the northern states, eyes on it. We're going to the Kuiper Belt, where the unthinkably populated region past Neptune not only has hundreds to thousands of dwarf planets, but millions of kilometer-sized objects as well. The first one of those to be found and monitored is here, ushering in a new era of discovering the individually tiny but altogether massive rock group out where the solar wind slows down. During my daily search of archive last night, found a paper whose authors waited more than an entire year only to be rejected by nature. How does that happen to a UCAR, Maryland, and NASA scientist? You suggest the internal magnetic force of the sun dwarfs what current models see as possible, and you point out that the abrupt cycle terminations are an easily noticeable way to realize the current solar models are wrong. Folks, the great volcano debate of our generation has begun. Veterans saw the Mush Volcano story from a few weeks ago about how magma chambers, which have never actually been found, make less sense in the model than crystal reactions in the slush underground. It is official. The scientific community is split. The thermoelectric action of crystals in lava environments is leading the race for those with a more magnetic view of Earth. We also have a major story about volcanic eruptions that did come out of nature, this one shows that extratropical volcanoes are vastly more efficient at cooling the planet than tropical ones. This is due to the relative isolation of the eruption into one hemisphere. By the way, even though it might seem like a volcano uptick is ongoing, we have not had a major stratospheric injection since 1991. We're well overdue. Last but not least, we are going deep into the cosmos to find one of the biggest problems in cosmology getting a little bit more challenging. Perhaps you heard about the conflict between Planck and Hubble, the expansion versus the constant based on conflicting observations. Well, now this early universe problem now must contend with uncooperative expansion. Either dark energy must be able to change its density over time, which is their only stated hypothesis, or the agglomeration of normal matter must have followed electrodynamic laws rather than simply gravitational ones. It's January 29th. Last day for the conference registration is January 31st, just two days away. Going to be another great event this year. We greatly appreciate your support. We've got your wind maps, followed by shots of our star to close. We'll do this all again tomorrow, right here. But right now, it's 4.05 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.